Hello guys, Colonel Ninny here. This is the third in the series on how to fly in IL-2's Flying Circus. In the first video, we learned how to start the engine, taxi and take off. In the second video, we learned how to control our airspeed and climb and descend and turn. In this, the third video, we're going to learn about aerodrome protocols, approaches and landings. This will help you to understand how to avoid the tents that people seem to put in the middle of your airfield. Let's begin with aerodromes and aerodrome protocols. First question, what is an aerodrome? Well, back in World War I, it was basically a farmer's field without the cows. Hence the name, airfield. So any field flat enough and smooth enough to land an airplane on could be called an aerodrome. And air and ground crews could enjoy living in the comfort of a tent as opposed to a trench. So on Flying Circus, aerodromes look like this. There's a landing area that we'll call a runway, and a windsock which tells us which direction the wind is blowing from. And generally aircraft take off and land into the wind. But with large groups of inexperienced, high testosterone young men, air traffic needed to be controlled. So they created a traffic pattern which revolved around the active runway. And this has generally evolved to becoming a left-hand circuit as a standard pattern, although there are right-hand circuits. And here we are turning from downwind to left base, shortly to turn to final towards the runway. When we return to the airfield from a sortie, we generally try to join the traffic pattern on the downwind leg. We can also cross over the center of the runway and join the downwind leg. Or if we're lined up, we can come straight in on the final leg. From previous lessons, we know that if we pull the power all the way back, so it's idling, that the nose is going to drop through a lack of lift. And we also know that we have perfect control over the airspeed as we pitch the nose up and down in relation to the horizon. So we need to set up an approach speed and hold that all the way down to the ground. For a given approach speed there will be a given glide angle. This culminates with our touchdown point. And of course we would like that point to be the end of the runway. And it looks like this. Does that look familiar? These airline pilots have transitioned from their instruments to the outside horizon, just like you. They get to this point from their cruising altitude by holding their airspeed steady and knowing their glide distance. But let's not get too complicated. The only thing that's important to you is the picture you see as you look forward out of the cockpit on the approach. We're going to approach and land in this field. We'll pull the power back to idle, lower the nose to get our glide speed, and then set up our approach angle. Our aiming point is going to be an inch or so above the little gizmo on the end of the engine between the gun sights. And right now that's just looking into the field beyond those trees. You'll notice where the wings are in relation to the horizon. They're level with it. If we keep everything constant, we know that we're going to cross over those trees into the open area of the field. There's no change in the pitch, therefore the speed is constant. We're coming to our aiming point by the buildings, then we're going to fly level once we get close to the ground. There's a change in attitude. And as we bleed our speed, we raise it a bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more, and we touch down. It's that simple. Let's watch that again. Pick that aiming point. Wings are level, the pitch is level, speed is constant, everything's perfect. We can see now as we're coming down to the aiming point, we fly at level by raising the nose very slightly, 
bleeds off the speed, we raise it some more, we raise it a little more, and we touch down. On this next one, we're going to pull the power back and set up an approach. First of all, getting the speed set. An inch or two above there takes us to that single tree. And that's going to be our aiming point. Speed is constant. You can see there's no change in the position of that tree in relation to the end of the knob. As we get closer, I'm going to choose to fly close to the ground, level off, lead the speed back, a bit more, a bit more, and touch down. But we're too close to the trees, so we're going to add power and take off again. This is a dangerous maneuver. Take a look at the attitude of the nose in relation to the horizon. We're right on the stall. That was rather reckless. You can see in both examples how by holding the attitude steady and maintaining the airspeed, our aiming point is precise. And all you need to do now is to fly it level by raising the nose slightly to bleed the speed and a bit more and a bit more and you touch down. So when you practice, don't do what I did and choose a short airfield with trees at the end. And if you review the previous clip, you'll see that when I raised the nose to climb over the trees, I never raised it above this point. If I had, I would have stalled the aircraft and had no room to recover, and died. So I have a final question for you. What would be the difference in landing with this attitude compared to this attitude? The answer is, touching down like this will give you a perfect landing. while touching down like this means you're coming in a little too fast and you'll bounce. Alright, so to recap, we've looked at aerodromes and aerodrome protocols, we've looked at approaches and landings and some theory. All that remains now is for you to get out there and practice. And in lesson four, we'll look at doing some more advanced flight maneuvers so you get comfortable with flying the airplane. If you've enjoyed this video and get some value out of it, please leave a comment and uh, subscribe and like and all those usual things. But if you want to see more of these videos, specifically with the IL-2 uh, Battle of Stalingrad, I've got about 150 training videos for you to look at. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.